Okay, so now we're going to talk about the advertising brief. Okay, so there, there was quite a lot involved in, in the introduction to, to how this all needs to come together. Um, and there's a whole lot of moving parts. But probably the easiest way to do this is to start actually breaking down into those components and look at it through a specific vehicle so the whole lot begins to make sense. So what's going to happen is developing the advertising brief or the creative brief is part of what you're going to be doing in business. Okay, so all businesses have to think about this at some point. I guess in some strange business you might not, but then you probably won't have a business of very long. So it's going to be something you're going to be doing. Um, in this subject, what we're going to do is we're going to start to look at a, just a bit of a variation um, in order to give the whole thing a bit of uh, depth and context. We're going to focus on something like a website or a blog, okay? And then we're going to plan ourselves around that. So a website or blog, it's a, it's a recognizable tool that we know. Um, you know, we've all seen it before. It's no real mystery there. So the website... Slash blog sort of forms the centerpiece. Okay, this is the the main center of gravity around which we're going to organize everything else. So we're going to say it's that there. Now you know, coming off the website or blog, we might have a few other different things we look at. So we might have things like um, you know, we might have TV advertising to drive us to a website. Okay, so the ads are out there driving people onto that. Okay, that might be supported by you know bill posters. So those nice posters you see around the place might also focus in on that. Okay. So we might have TV, we might have that. Also, once again, trying to drive traffic into what we're doing. Okay, um, on the bill posters, obviously, then we need to think about, well, you know, do we want just the big poster or are we gonna have flyers? Okay. Now, if the flyers have just got information on them, do we need to put a QR code? Okay, so we can use QR codes to start to link all this up and start to drive information back to the minute. You know, and the QR codes you see in those nice little patterns, people can scan it and all of a sudden take it to your website or whatever. Okay, if we're going to all this effort, do we need to think about Instagram? Okay, or some other social media that drives back into the website? Okay, we start to connect more and more of these things off it. Um, you know, we can have Facebook sitting there. We can start putting all sorts of different things on Facebook. We can start getting, you know, those demotivationals or motivational posters. Okay, it turns into this really long conceptual map of all the different things that we can start doing with that. Um, okay, we've gone TV. Do we want to go for a radio station? Okay, radio station, once again, to help drive that back there. Is there an interlink between those two? Okay, don't know, maybe, maybe not. Um, okay, so you start to see very quickly, um, Facebook can be Google+, Plus. turns into LinkedIn, turns into YouTube, turns into forum and chat groups. Okay, so the whole thing very quickly um, starts to look at different ways to channel into this website or blog. Because ultimately, this is where we want the customers to end up. So these are all different media channels or different vehicles we can use to try and drive people back to the middle, all right? So, you know, it's, it's, it's not just one thing we're doing or two things. They interlink with each other and there can be a whole bunch of them. And if we've already started one, do we think about bleeding over to the next or do we keep it separate? Okay, so our social media platform, are we gonna have Instagram and Facebook and LinkedIn or is it not appropriate for LinkedIn so we wouldn't use that? If we're gonna do that, are we gonna have, what's the consistent message? We need to have a consistent style, a consistent approach, okay? Consistency is a big one we're looking for there, but the whole aim of all of those different parts is to drive everything back to this website or blog that we've created, okay? That is really the central point, the focus of our business or the, our center of gravity, and we want everything to uh, start to get into that. So in traditional media advertising or media planning, the client is the advertiser, all right? So the client's the advertiser in this case, so the person that wants it out there. And what we need to do is um, there needs to be an advertising brief formed, which is developed by the business and given to the media planner. So what will happen is that the business will sit down as the client and say, look, this is what we're going to achieve. Um, this is the, the brief. Um, this is what we're out trying to do, or this is, this is what's going on. These are our objectives, etc. Okay, now sometimes that brief is delivered in-house and then developed uh, or given to the person responsible for media planning. So it could be that, you know, I sit down and, and come up with what I want to do and I have one of my staff who's going to deliver that on the ground. But once again, I start to look at, well, what is the brief going to be? Okay, once again, as I say, it, it's really about, you know, what am I trying to achieve? How am I going to achieve it, etc. Or, you know, what do I want to have happen? Um, and when, to some degree. All right, there are some key components that, uh, that need to be there. Okay, but the amount of detail will we'll move around a little bit. Okay, so the first thing they're going to obviously need is if we're going to put a list together, um, all of this had an objective. Okay, so there needs to be an objective. Okay, so I start to look at what I want to achieve. And in this case, every, the objective was, was to drive an audience onto my website and blog. Okay, so the next question is, well, who is that audience? 
Okay, so the next point I put there is what's the, the audience? Um, and, and what do I want to have happen? So what do I suspect is going to happen? Where, where do I want them to go? What do I want them to do? And that starts to come down to any specific key insights I have. Okay, what do I want people to get out of this? What do I want them to glean? Um, what's going to be the stimulus? Okay, so you know, what's going to be the, the trigger? Uh, what is the ideal response I want from people? Okay, so in other words, when I look at these last bits, um, what's the key insight? So what do I want to get out of it? But now they're stimulated to come. Are they going to come to the website? What's going to happen? How are they going to respond? Uh, what's, what do I want them to do when they get there? Do I just want them to favorite it, bookmark it? Or do I want them purchasing things on there? Okay, so I need to start thinking these things through. Um, I need to start thinking about my creative requirements. And when we're talking that, do I actually have branding, et cetera, already in place? Okay, do I have branding? Do I have a key message? Do I have um, what have I already got and what needs to be developed? Okay, I need to think about my time period. Okay, so when is this gonna happen? Um, how long is it gonna happen for? When does it need to start, et cetera? And then lastly, I need to think about, you know, the one that we love, dollars, the budget. So how much cash am I gonna be putting into it? All right, so that really starts to become um, your media planning brief. You know, what am I trying to achieve? Who am I trying to achieve it with? Uh, what do I know about them? What do I want them to learn? What's gonna happen next? All right, what's, what, what's the stimulus? What's the response I expect from these people? Uh, what creative requirement we have? So, you know, what needs to happen? Um, what needs to be developed and built? I need to think about the time frames I wanna do this for. Um, you know, am I building myself around a particular time? Am I a retailer thinking that I want this done by Christmas? Um, if so, how long is it going to take? When do I need to put the first thing in place to make sure that I'm ready for Christmas? Okay. So if it's going to take me three months to get this thing together, there's no point me planning it in November for a Christmas delivery. Okay. I'll, I'll effectively miss my timing. So I need to think about exactly how long is that going to take me to build. All right. So we'll go into those in a little bit more detail in a minute. All right. But that's just a bit of an overview. Uh, gives us a big picture of where it's going to go. And we're going to break down into each one of these in a second and really get some depth behind it. Cool. Okay, so let's just go over those, um, those details a little bit more and just in a little bit more depth just so we really understand what's going on. So the first part is developing the objective. Okay, so we're just going to step through this one more time. So the objective itself is I need to think about what I want to do. Do I want to build my brand awareness and generate interest? Okay, so is that what I'm doing? Building brand and generating interest of my customers? Am I trying to strengthen um, the brand preference over my competitors? In other words, I'm already out there, people already know about it, I just want to become the provider of choice. Uh, do I want to inform my customers about a new product or service we're putting out there? So is it, is it just really generally for their information? So they understand there's an upcoming sale, so we can start to generate some excitement around that. Um, are we trying to change people's opinion of us? Okay, so we've seen that in the past, that certain companies have had a, a bit of a reputation. Um, they're not trying to sell anything in this case, they're just trying to shape opinion about their company. Um, and we've seen that through large petrochemical companies that may have had a few international incidents and those sort of things. They want to shape that and make you know, people's opinion of them better so they're seen a certain way. Um, some fast food chains also did the same thing. Um, you know, super size me. All right, so, and then we might also think about do we want to increase the sales of a particular product? Okay, so that's what we're trying to do there is we're trying to understand, well, those are the different sorts of objectives. What am I trying to aim or some sort of composition of those things, right? I need to also then think about the audience. Okay, because they're gonna have different information needs. Okay, and when I'm talking about the information need of that, I need to think, are they, uh, is this a business to business type relationship I'm trying to form or is it business direct to customer? Okay, if it's business to business, they're gonna have one set of information needs. If it's business to customer, they're gonna be motivated entirely differently. Um, I need to start to define the key characteristics of them. Obviously, you know, your demographic, your geographic, your psychographic, um, and also starting to think about their behavioral um, attitudes. How often do they use those goods and services? Um, what's the demand level like? All those sort of things amongst those. And also thinking about their media consumption. So um, what's their usage patterns and preferences? How often do they use the media I want to get them in front of? Um, you know, it, there's no point ma having massive uh, newspaper ads if my target audience doesn't read newspapers. Okay, they're on Facebook the entire time and they're not too worried about reading a newspaper. All right, I need to think about any key insights, as we say. And what we're talking about there is, you know, any unique understanding I have about my audience, okay? So what do I know about these people, um, you know, and, and, you know, that's going to start to influence what they know and how they know and how they like to learn it. Do I know that they have, you know, particular pet likes, particular pet interests? 
Okay, this is that special stuff that you know, okay? Um, do you know these people pretty well? Um, do you know a habit and behavior that might not be obvious to, to another person, okay? So uh, little traits, they like this, they don't like that, etc. cetera. Uh, this is how they're gonna achieve and receive information and these are the sort of things I wanna discuss with them. All right, so you really wanna get that, that any special knowledge you have. Um, that allows you to develop an angle or an approach. Uh, you know the best way to approach them um, and the sort of messages they're probably gonna be in for. Uh, we need to think about the ideal response. And what we're looking there is, you know, we're talking about well, what do you want the audience member to think, feel, do, um, or what do you want their attitude to be upon being exposed to your message. So once we put the message out there, um, where do we want them at? Um, are we just trying to change their mind about us? Um, do we need something to happen? Um, do we need them to take an action? Um, do you want them, you know, to be thinking something? Um, do you want them to be believing something? Do you want them to have a particular feeling towards you? You know, is it that, oh, what a nice person, or are you trying to get them excited? Um, what is it you want them to do, okay? So what you start to think about is, you know, you can evoke those responses, okay, the, the what happens next um, by giving them calls to action. You can use images, music. Um, you can use all sort of, you know, um, voice evocative words, okay? You can jump onto trends, you know, you can, you can hop into the latest meme, etc. What you're really trying to do is, well, what do you want to have happen? Okay, is there a call to action that they then come to your website and start purchasing something or what, it, what does it happen to be? All right. The next part we start to think about is thinking about your creative and merchandising. Okay, obviously if you've been to the movies in the last 50 million years, um, you would have seen that, you know, that their creative product and the merchandising is pretty solid, okay? We need to think about, you know, what's the size, what's the shape, what's the branding, um, what sounds, what colors do we want to have there? Uh, this is where we break down, so what needs to be done? Do we need, you know, specific logos? Um, do we need, you know, how's this all going to um, fit together? Is it going to be digital? Is it going to be print? Um, you know, what sort of medium? Do we need illustrations done? Um, all those sort of things there, okay? Do we need a graphic designer? Do we need an illustrator, website? You know, there's a whole myriad of stuff that goes in there. Okay, but what we want to do is we want to make sure the branding and the message is pretty clear. So your merchandising or, you know, the merchandising stuff might be, um, you know, creating the brand perception for people. Um, it might be identifying with a particular community, um, you know, and, and that's what we're really starting to look at there. Okay, so what we want to get out of them. The next one is the time period. Okay, when I said community there, it could be like, you know, your football team, whatever, go nuts. All right, so time period, I need to think about, well, when does it need to be delivered? So how long from now and when? Okay, so Christmas, I know if, you know, if we're in June, I know I've got six months um, to, to get that done, all right? So that gives us you know, six months to get a campaign done for launch at Christmas. Um, I also need to think about you know, um, once it starts, how long is it gonna be delivered for? Okay, so I know that at Christmas, I want that merchandising to run for you know, four weeks after that, and this is the campaign. Or I might structure it to say, here's a lead up, here's the, the next part, and there's the next part afterwards. So a before, a during, and an after. Okay, so I can mix up um, where I want to go there, but I need to know what those key time periods are, and I need to think about the budget, which is the last part. Okay, the budget for the campaign. How much am I spending? When am I spending it? Um, how much will I have available? When will those funds be available? When do they fall due? When do I need to pay them? Uh, when do I need to get all my bookings done by? All right, so they're all the different things I need to think about. Uh, probably the one that's gonna chew up a heap of your time is your creative and merchandise. It's one line here, but there's so many smaller details and elements that are gonna come into it. Okay, so those, you know, it's gonna be guided by your objective, guided by your audience understanding, guided about what you know about that audience and, 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 and how they operate and what they know. Um, you know, you've got an idealized response about what you want to happen, but this is where you're gonna chew up a massive amount of time coming up just with all that stuff that's gonna come in here, okay? The things that you want. Key colors, key sounds, keys, you know, the sky's the limit. Um, it's a creative space, how do you limit creativity? Um, but your time period will you usually, you'll, you'll have a pretty good idea of where that's going from because you're gonna tie around key events and your budget obviously is pretty easy because you do the odd look in the pocket and see what we got. Uh, or hopefully try and find money from somewhere else if we need to. All right, so that's pretty much what's gonna happen in that and um, good luck with those. Think about them carefully, think about what you want to achieve and uh, have fun planning.